So um, what exactly were we working on in the previous class? So um, up to this point, uh, we have done few things, um, like I, I made you aware of the different um, uh, forms of uh, Selenium. There is Selenium IDE, there is Selenium RC server, and then there is Selenium uh, web uh, driver. Um, as you hear my phone going off, somebody had not received their name, so please bear with me for a second. Okay, I do apologize. Um, this usually happens on day one and day two, uh, but it shouldn't uh, be the case uh, later on in the course. So, um, first few days, uh, uh, you know, we take a little time to settle down. Anyways, coming back to um, now, uh, there was a point here that is, um, uh, I need to see the videos from the day one class. Okay. Um, you should be able to get the videos after this session is over. Uh, I will make sure that you all get your videos. Uh, Okay, so uh, bear with us uh, till we finish the session and then you should have your videos. Okay, so uh, coming back to what we have covered in the first session, we talked about uh, basically about um, uh, the three different um, you know, forms of Selenium. Uh, I have introduced you to Selenium IDE and uh, um, I also told you, um, you know, the popularity of IDE in terms of, uh, uh, you know, when and how uh, much of IDE you would be using. So uh, here is your IDE um, and uh, your RC server. These two uh, are not that popular anymore as we uh, stand today on the in the month of October of 2013. These are not uh, very popular. They were um, extremely popular, uh, you know, a few years ago, but not anymore. Uh, today, the thing they are looking for is your knowledge in WebDriver, right? So that should be the focus of our course, and eventually we will be getting there very soon. Uh, but before we get there, you have to have the knowledge of IDE and RC server um, to the extent that you could uh, participate in the interviews, and um, if you get a job, and uh, if uh, at any given time if they uh, put you on the spot and ask you to work on RC server, you should be able to work on RC server. So that much of knowledge I'm going to transfer. Um, from me to you when it comes to RC server and IDE. So you already have tasted the flavor of IDE. You know what IDE is, uh, where to download it from, how to install, if at all, if that was any process, uh, you know what it is. It takes a blink of an eye to install uh, IDE because of the fact that it is a plug-in. It's a plug-in of what? Of Firefox. So. Um, I showed you in the previous class how to download it, how to install it, and how to use it. So while we were using it, we looked into a test case. The test case was uh, how we're going to be um, logging in into screencast or for that matter, anything 
right um, we should be able to uh, do the recording so it basically helps you with the recording of a script so we did went in we recorded a script and then after we recorded that script um, we had some instructions in the form of uh, command and then what is the value which we are giving and what is the target right the command can be um, something like uh, type um, where are you typing? You're typing on a certain target and target is nothing but the uh, element on the page. So if you take a look at a page, any page you look into, usually what do you have in that page? You have uh, something like an image on a page, uh, something like a text uh, box on a page, uh, a radio button on a page, uh, you have check box on a page, uh, you have let's say a list box. I mean these are the things I'm just you know using um, uh, which there's a possibility of you finding it on a page. Now there could be a lot of other things which you could be finding on a page. Now the question is how does uh, Selenium IDE goes and locates these things on a page? So these things are located these things are located on a page based on uh, certain attributes, right? Certain attributes. Now, first of all, Selenium calls these things as elements, right? So you have elements on the page, and these elements, they they are um, the each element has got an attribute. So how does that translate to real life? Um, if you want to call me an element, a human being as an element, I am an element, right? So I will have certain attributes. Now, if you have to identify me uh, compared to, uh, you know, me standing next to, uh, let's say, a dog, right? So uh, now, who is better looking? I would leave that uh, to your judgment. <laughs> but the way to identify between a human and a dog is a human has certain attributes, right? So I have... I have what? I have legs as two. I have something called hands as two. I have eyes as two. Now, same is the case with the dog, except that uh, eyes he has or she has as two, but legs is uh, something uh, different, maybe four, right? It, it has a tail. I mean, I, I don't have a tail that you can see. So, things like that. So, bottom line of this is uh, you have elements. They are identified by the attribute. So, the most important of the attribute is something called ID, identification ID. How do you ID me by, let's say, I could have a social security number. Five 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 five. Uh, that's let's say my ID. Uh, another way of identifying me, my attribute is my name, right? So you would know my name. The other, so these are basically the ways of identifying me as a human being. Likewise, if you want to identify an image or a, a or a radio button or a checkbox, text box or list, whatever it is, right? The way you identify is it will IDE is going to go and then uh, put its it's either ID equals whatever uh, as as the attribute, right? Uh, it will put it in there. And then the value is what do you want to do on that? Let's say if it's a text box, what do you do? You want to type onto it. What do you want to type into it? Let's say uh, something like, uh, you know, if it is uh, an email text box. Likewise, you know, depending on what the what is the purpose of that text box. If the purpose of the text box is to search for something, then the value would be the text which you would be typing in there to search for it. So, uh, rather than talking about it, why don't I show you these things? So, um, you would say that, oh, you already showed it to us in the last class, right? Then I find you yawning right now because you said, um, I already saw this movie before. Um, so over here, uh, what we're going to be doing here is uh, you know, we could go and we could uh, select um, whatever we need to select here, right? So we had selected here, um, let's say, uh, screencast.com and what do you want to do in here? So if you want to type the uh, commands, uh, there was an... Um, uh, question I guess uh, somebody had raised uh, the problem is unfortunately um, I'm not that old but uh, I tend to become old because uh, there is a limit to multitasking I mean at any given point I am in 
20 different things. Uh, I'm a full-time job. I manage about uh, a team of uh, 23 people. Uh, that's uh, my daytime job. That's what I do. In the evenings, I'm teaching these courses. On the weekends, I'm teaching some courses. And then I go out and talk. So basically, uh, you know, you tend to forget, uh, uh, you know, what particularly you are doing at what time. Um, so um, there was a question. The question was, um, um, I want to type uh, the commands in here, right? So uh, how do I go about typing the commands? Well, uh, I, I can give you the answer. The answer is you will go in here depending on what command you want to type, right? So the command is, let's say, if you want to uh, go and uh, um, over here, if you are adding, uh, adding a new command, when you add a new command, you could go and you could type the command. What kind of command you want to type, you see here the commands, right? I mean, there is a, a huge list of it, right? Okay, now the question is, um, let's say uh, we all live here in the United States, and we want to go on vacation, right? We want to go on vacation to wherever we want to go. Right? Let's say out of the country. Let's say we want to go to Mexico, we want to go to uh, Canada, or better, let's say to Europe or maybe to Asia. But how do you get there? Right? I mean, you you can take a, 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 a cruise and go to Australia. Right? I mean, who is stopping you from um, from you know getting on a ship and going to Australia on your vacation? Probably by the time you reach there, it is going to take like uh, three weeks, right? And as itself, I mean, the crews are like so dangerous. I mean, you never know uh, whether <laughs> you would come back or not. I mean, you heard those stories what happened in those different cruises, right? But the point which I want to make here is uh, um, when we are in automation, the idea here is when you are on vacation, you want to go reach your uh, destination quickly, have fun, and then come back. The vacation should not be about, you know, reaching from point A to point B. Okay, I have a vacation of three weeks. That doesn't mean that I will spend those three weeks uh, getting to Australia. Now, what am I going to do in Australia if the whole time I was traveling? So, how, how, what is my point? Why am I even talking about it? The reason is the idea of testing, automated testing, is to create the scripts quickly to focus on the testing. Now, if you're talking about typing the commands here, it's almost like walking uh, to your destination on, on vacation. Sure, you can type the commands, but the idea here is go and do the recording. Record it, get the script quickly, and then focus on your testing rather than typing. Now, who is going to stop you from walking to Australia? I will not, right? I mean, who in the world would walk, walk to Australia? But walking, if I take an example, if I want to go to Florida, I mean, I, I really don't want to walk to Florida. So if I want to create my script, I do not want to type these commands, right? Can I walk? Sure. Can I type these commands? Absolutely, I can type the commands. Now, I would say that there is a zero, almost a zero possibility that you would ever be typing the commands at work. If somebody tells you to type these commands, I think you, you should better leave that job and then go someplace else, right? Because uh, the idea of testing is to create the script quickly and then to focus on the testing. With that said, I am going to show you some of the commands which you want to do in here. So, uh, what do you do? You want to open. So, here is open, right? Open what? Open uh, forward slash here. That means that open whatever is here, open it. So, that's, that's one command. Okay, you come in here, right click on that, insert a new command. And second command is, what do you want to do now? You want to open screencast. What do you want to do after going to screencast? Okay, let's go and do a manual test. I come to the screencast and I want to do the login test, right? So I come in here and I have to type it into this box. So to type in that box, I have to go and I have to do that. So I have to say type, uh, I will say type, okay. Type where, the target. How do I find out what is this? The way I can find out what this is, is in the previous class, there's nothing new so far um, which I'm talking today. Everything which I'm doing right now is was already covered in day one. So for folks like Kevin or somebody who did not attend day one session, this could be like, uh, what is he doing? Where is he running away from with this? So the you've got to go back and then watch the video on day one. And for all of you who were there in day one session, you, you might be saying, 
what boring stuff is he talking about? He had already showed me this stuff. Why is he teaching this again? The fact is, I'm just going to show you the difference between recording and typing the command. So how tedious it is, how totally it defeats the purpose of automation if you want to go and then type it here. So let's continue to do it one more time so that I can prove my point of why you should not be doing this. Now, if there is a need for you to do it, this is how it is done. Now, you have to go and type into the target. So this is the target. How do you identify this target? For that, we have to use certain tools. The tools which you will be using are, number one, there is something called Firebug. So in the last class, I already showed you as how to download Firebug and how to install it. So let me uh, show you the use of Firebug. Here we go and we go into the web developer and here is the firebug and then click on the firebug. As soon as I do that, this little thingy pops up. Now notice that I see something called a fire path here. Fire path will give you the X path of that element. Now the question is, what the heck is X path? In the interview, you would be saying that, well, I identified the elements on uh, on my application uh, different ways. I could use the attributes of that element like ID or the name of that element or for that matter the name of the class of that element which I did not talk about so far but I will be. And I could also identify an element by its XPath. So what is XPath and how we use it? Basically XPath is, let's say, to give you a simple example of it, you you and I, we both work, um, let's say, in the same building, right? Um, we say hi, hello to one another while we are going inside the building because we come in the same subway and then we go into the same building. So, you know, we just chit-chat and all that. But in order for, uh, in order for um, uh, you to find me in that building, I got to tell you a few things about where I am. So I'll s say that, okay, we are in the same building, okay, so that's one thing, but I am in the left wing and I am on the 14th floor and once you go on the 14th floor, you have to go to uh, suite number 1431 and in suite 1431, go and ask for aisle uh, C and you would find my cubicle on the fourth, uh, uh, on the right. You're like, wow, right? Now, now I just made it up. I, I don't work on the 14th floor. I do not. And my suite is not 1431. You would be saying, no, 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 you gave up now. Well, whatever the reason is, uh, that is not the true information. But the idea behind me talking about that was to tell you how to locate. Them. So I gave you the location by what? I gave you the location by the floor, by the uh, left wing or the right wing or by my cubicle, by my aisle, and stuff like that. Now, uh, how do you do that on a web page? If you right click on this web page, and if I look into the page view source, and you would find so much of stuff in here. See here, a lot of uh, stuff in here. Now, we as testers, we don't really have to worry about all of these things. We don't, right? So we don't have to worry. If you know HTML, very good, right? You will be a smart tester. You will be making tons of money very quickly if you know HTML and if you know uh, things like that. But it is not required that you should know it. Okay? But how, how do I still find out the expat? What happens is, if you have this page, right, I will quickly go and, uh, oops, go and uh, draw a page here. So if this is a page, and on this page, let's say I have a logo here, I have some links here, and then I have uh, some more links here, then I have this section here, in this section I have this text box, another text box, and I have a button here, and then I have another section here, and I have a, a grid here showing some data, and I need to find out something about this one. So in reference to this page, starting from here, First of all comes this uh, this image, uh, then comes these links, uh, then comes these links, then comes this type, and then it this is the one which we are interested in. So if I have to go from the beginning of the page, the, the way uh, it gets identified is it is HTML, and then it is a head, then inside the head it is title, then da 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 da, end of title, then end of head and, and begin body, 
in the body, you have some table, inside them some table, and then eventually you have that, that text box type uh, uh, and that, you know, whatever the information is. So that's that text box. So if you look from here, this is the starting point. So we hit, first of all, the table, and then we hit the other boxes, and then we hit the actual this thing, right? So from right from the beginning, where do you find it? And the way it, 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 it can locate it is this is the building. This is inside the building. You go to the 14th floor, then go. So this is how it is, right? So the way it gets located is you and I, we don't really have to struggle to worry about it, right, and, and worry about it. So how do we do? We go and, and get a tool called Fire Path, Fire Path. So I go to Google and I say that, uh, help me download FirePath, help me download FirePath. And what is FirePath? FirePath is an add-on of Firefox again, right? So I could go and then I could download it, right? So if I say download that, it is going to take me to a page from where I could go ahead and then I could download it. It's giving me some statistics about it. So let me just go and then click on this one and get um, to download it. Here it is, add to Firefox. So if I do that, if I click and then add to the Firefox, see here, it is getting uh, added. I already have it, so I'm not going to install it, so I'll cancel. So when you do that, eventually it goes and it piggybacks. It sits on top of the Firebug, right? So it sits on top of Firebug. So here I go, and, and I go into the developer. I bring up my fire, uh, Firebug, and when I bring the Firebug, you see if you install, if you install the... Fire path, then this is this will this area will show up. And how does this help? Now we will go and figure it out. If I take if I go into click on this, click on this, and come and and go to the element which I need to identify, whether it is this or that or that or that. It's like the object spy of QTP. If I click on that, now notice there are two places, there are some details. This is, this is one area where I can find the details. This is another area where I can find the details, right? If I focus in this area, this area tells me that, okay, the ID is email address. So this is one of the attributes of it that I can take and work with in my, in my uh, so I will take ID equals email address, and then I'm going to go into my Selenium IDE, and in my, oh, we were in the recording mode, so it did record everything wherever we, we were, right? So it recorded everything. So I'm just going to go and uh, uh, delete all this, right? So this is this is where I was. Type, type where? Type here. Type where ID equals email address. I want to type there, right? So don't put this uh, equal signs or what, uh, or the quote, rather. So type in uh, where ID equals email address. What do I want to type? Let's say I want to type uh, uh, training right uh, at uh, gmail.com, something like that. Right? So this is the value. So if you see here the commands which are being built, so this is my test so far. So if I stop my test, if I stop my, uh, rather my recording, right? I was not at all my reco uh, uh, recording, so that step I should have done. Uh, right in the beginning. So I have typed my commands. This is that, this is that. Now I need to run it. Before I run, I need to store because if I uh, try to run it, um, um, it's always, see here, it will go and then it will put it. But it is always better if we store it. If I try to run and then something happens and everything crashes and then if you have like 20 commands which you have typed out, everything will be gone. So it's always better to save it. But in this case, because there was only two, so I ran it. So I ran, and what happened when I ran it? So this is where it went in. It, it uh, basically typed that instruction. So now the question is, do you know how to type the command? Absolutely, I know, right? Because you just saw it, how to do that. Now, can you continue to type something in the password? Yes, I can do that. How would you do that? Well, uh, this time I'm going to look into the fire path. Uh, this time I'll use fire path. Um, so... What is, uh, uh, Hardik, uh, is, is uh, my voice still breaking or, or um, you're okay now? Um, okay, good. Um, good. Um, okay, great. Excellent. All right, so what happens is here I'm going to go and then here I'm going to uh, go and type the password. 
to log in right so uh, in order to type the password if i am if i'm typing my commands i'm going to come in here right click and say that insert new command and what am i typing here i'm going to go in here and say uh, let me just make it a little bigger so that it's easy on the eyes and what am i doing there typing so here is my type type where can somebody tell me how i can i can go and get some details to put in the target you would say that this is what i want you to do irfan right go to your browser click on tools bring your web developer bring the firebug and do this or you could have done f12 f12 is the shortcut so this will come up right so this is pointing at this one now we want this one so what do you do we come and then we click here after you click take your mouse make sure that you go to the the object or the element you are interested in you should not be going here because that's not where i want to uh, type i want to type here so let's get the address of this so once i do that so of course it gives me all the addresses here this time i'm going to use the x path so x path for this is this right see here this is this it's going to start off it's going to start off with a with a period with a dot and then you have two forward slashes and an asterisk and then this is the actual this is the actual name of that so if you see id equals password the same thing was here id equals password but this is how you will identify using the xpath now here is a here is something which you need to know if you look into this xpath and if you drop it down right if you drop this thing down you see that there is xpath here right there is css here right so and if you go in here there's some sizzle there right so it sometimes by mistake uh, it it might be on some different settings right so i want you to make sure that you are in the xpath you are in the xpath you are in the xpath and take whatever you have do not take the dot here do not take the dot because the way it is it is it is it comes up with it is um now before before this actual element there are so many other elements so when when we come up with something uh here let me just we have dot forward slashes and then we are referencing that id equals password right so if you notice this this is an at sign id equals if you notice this and two forward slashes that means that these two forward slashes and whatever you have in here that means i don't care how you come to this point you navigate anywhere on the page wherever you find this that's the one which i'm, I'm looking so this with this this forward slashes and whatever it is finding here see here this forward slashes and then asterisks that's the wild card so it says that uh, i am this is more like an regular expression it says that uh, find me by this but don't care about anything before me right before this i don't care about anything there could be this asterisk two forward slashes followed by an asterisk that means that anything before me ignore from the root from the root meaning that right from here right from here there could be lot of other things just ignore it and that's that's that uh, meaning of this this is right so there is a dot two forward slash and asterisk so do not use this dot two forward slash asterisk and then whatever you have inside it id equals whatever is the password is that's what you have to take so you don't you and i we don't really have to worry about this the tool does all that so it did whatever it did for us so just take it without the dot sign just take it so copy that come over here to your uh, selenium ide and that's what i need to that's what i need to type here correct that's what i need to type okay what password what is the value in the password that i'm going going to put i'm going to try anything so i will just say uh, garbage right so i'm i'm calling it garbage right so of course garbage is not the password here right uh, so it is going to fail that's fine right so because i don't want to put the right password and show it to you <laughs> so so we took that right after that what am i going to do so we open we typed in the email address we typed in the password and then what do we do now the next step is what what do you think is the next step 
Okay, I'm going to wait till you tell me because I've been continuously talking for about 40 minutes now. So I wait, I take a pause and I ask a question and I expect you to respond and say that, wow, this is what you should be doing next. Okie dokie, let's see. Um, Nisha says, okay, you have to click on the sign in button. Um, Hardik says that click on the enter. Now, where is enter? Click enter. Where is enter? This is not enter. Right? Okay, so uh, Nisha is right when she says that click on the sign in. Right? So, uh, Renee, my friend, nice to see you. Um, so, how does the transition from mobile testing to <laughs> to selenium right um well you will you will enjoy you will enjoy both uh, i can tell you but uh let's uh, come back and then click on this sign in button because now the keyword here is click 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 right so let's click right so in the command i would say click now notice cl i start seeing some clicks there is a click and click and wait Right now, what is the difference between click and click and wait and click at and click at and wait and then okay, I don't need close. Now the difference is if you are let's say if here if I'm doing this, I'm here, right? And then I want to go and then click on here. So I'm not gonna say click and wait. I will click here and then I will I will do something, right? Uh, whatever I need to do in here. So I should I should say click click on this box. Right? Click on this box and the value I would say that clean the, let's say here, when I click on it, I want it to go away. Right? When I click on it, I want this to go away. Like say for password, the functionality is when you click on that, the word password goes away. Right? But this is, we, we put this. Right? So let's say if it was already there, some value was already there and when you click on that, it should go away. Then the code which you would type is click and in the target you would do and in the value you would do like an empty string. So that would go away. But in this case, I am clicking and what do I expect now? It will go, right? It will go to some other page. So I got to wait there. Click and wait is a better uh, command in here. So depending on what you are doing, you should be selecting. So here I will come and I say click and wait is a better one. Okay, where am I clicking and waiting? Come on, are you kidding me? So this is what you do. You go and how about bringing F12? F12, this brings F12. Go click on that and then click on this. Do you want to take the X path and identify that object? Or do you want to identify that object by ID? Does it make any difference? No. I, as long as you can identify, go and identify it. Right? So I can maybe take X path again and then come in here and then go to this and uh, uh, target. Uh, I don't need a value here. What am I doing for the value? I mean, value, I'm not passing anything. or anything. So this is that, right? So this is my test case. I mean, even though I did not want it to type it, uh, but only because uh, you wanted to see how it is done, I did that. In real life, uh, you will never do that, right? But it's good to know as how to go and identify certain things. So that's why I did that. So let us go and run it now. What do you think is going to happen? When I run it, so it's going to go and see here and clicked on that it did click on that and you know it's a different story that I did not put the right uh, password so it came over here right but had I put the right password so what would happen so let's try with something I'm not gonna give you the training right uh, password so that you could see here so let's go and change it to uh, I will use it here as uh, another one so uh, Um, which one can I use? Uh, uh, QA online trainer. Uh, nine, let's say, and password. Uh, I think is password. Right? So I hope uh, this should work. Uh, if it doesn't work, uh, then uh, no problem. So OK. So we come in here. Uh, we go and then we run it a little bit slow. And I will run this. When I run that, uh, let's see if it logs me in. No. So that's not the right credentials. So uh, 
let me see the right credentials would be let me just uh, bear with me for a second here uh, TR online trainer TR online trainer right and I guess the rest of the information is right so let's try now okay here we go it's going to take me there put that put that <laughs> gosh uh, boy uh, Okay, so um, okay, so that's it. <laughs> Hang on for a second. Uh, sign up for a new account. Let us do it. Um, okay, N training right online trainer seventy uh, seven at uh, gmail dot com. Right, password is I'm manually doing it. Password. Password is password, and this is the same. I will take, uh, put it in here, United States, sign up, and I should have an account. Uh, um, so this is what we have, right? So training right online 77. At, uh, so this is all manually I did it. So let us uh, do it now with this script. So I'm going to go and then use this as the email address, and now I should be able to uh, log in. This is at gmail.com, correct? At gmail.com. And the password was just password, uh, just password. So let us uh, run, and it should pretty much log me in now. So here we go. That and that, and click on sign in. And there you go. We are logged in. Beautiful. We are logged in. All right. So my test, uh, this is a new account. Just uh, we don't want to watch that. Uh, so how can we make sure that we logged in? Right? How can we make sure that we logged in? So what do we do? Think about it. So uh, what we have to do is, if I see here, if I see here, this training uh, TR online, whatever that is, or if I see sign out button, that means that I am successfully logged in. So, okay, let's do this. Can I? Can I? Verify? Can I have a checkpoint where I can? Uh, say that okay I successfully logged in right how can I do that so for that what we have to do is this 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 element whichever element you highlight that element right click on it right click on it and see here show all available commands show all available commands now we have to go and we have to do a checkpoint so the checkpoint is done uh, in one of the two ways either verify or assert assert or verify now the question is uh, uh, which one should we use right and what is the difference between an assert and a verify because both of them we are saying are used for ch like checkpoints right as a verification for a verification purpose that we logged in so I want to verify I want to verify that this this sign up the, the whole thing or for that matter this sign out this sign out this sign out exist if sign out exists that means that I was sign in if I sign in then only sign out will be there so I highlight that right click on that go into show all available commands and let's look into let's start reading into it there is assert assert text assert text right on this link object called sign out sign out Right? So it is going to assert for this text. So it will say, yes, it is there if it sees it. Sees what? Sees a link where it says sign out. Right? Okay, that's that's one way of it. The other one is, how about verifying by the title? Verifying the title. What is verifying title? Right here on the top, if you see my mouse, right? My mouse I'm taking up. The title is training right online 77th library but maybe next time I would not log in as training right uh, online so uh, that's why you should not be looking for anything like this but some some generic way of identifying it right I mean we can parameterize it and all that that's where the um, uh, what do you call the uh, limitations of um, 
of your ID comes in because I cannot write conditional logic. I cannot say that if this is the case, do that. I cannot do it. I cannot kind of like parameterize it. I cannot do a data, uh, you know, check with uh, a different sets of data like parameterization and all that. So there's certain limitations of it and that's what I'm trying to highlight. But uh, so if you want to log in uh, and make sure that you have successfully logged in, how about can I, can I check for assert or how about can I check for uh, you know verify so what is the difference between assert and verify verify is uh, it is it'll it'll see that okay it is there or let's say it is not there if sign out is not there then the test will fail right then the test will fail but what if, if I am if I have lot other instructions here if I have this is the last step here this is the last step here and I am going to verify now and the, I'm, I'm going to do a checkpoint and verify. The way I'm going to do a checkpoint and a verify is basically I'm going to go here and then uh, right click as I did and I say that here, here it is, right? Assert text, right? Assert text if I say or if I want to see more, I will go in here and I will say verify verify text link. So if I do that, let's see what com command gets stored. So if I do that, come back in here and take a look. Uh, it says in here, it says in here that verify text link equals sign out. Verify that it is, it is there. Now, let's say rather than using verify, I use assert. So when should I use verify and when should I use assert? If you use verify and this it fails here, but you have lot of other other commands after it. The test will still continue to execute. Continue to execute. It will say that okay, that that step failed, but I'm going to continue with the other steps. But had you use assert here, if you had use assert, then that means that it is not going to uh, continue any further. So that's the difference between assert and verify. So now the question is, uh, can we insert a breakpoint in IDE? Uh, now can you do that? Yeah, sure. You can do uh, sort of like debugging. Yeah, when you, if you want to go right click on that and then you could, you could put a breakpoint here. If you could uh, see, uh, you could, you could toggle with the breakpoint. So you could come in here, that's your breakpoint. And then you could toggle again if you just go in here and then do, uh, so B as in boy for a breakpoint. So I just did B and B again, it's a toggle. So you can break, you can break it and you could toggle it, you could go step by step, you could do all that good stuff. But um, very rarely people use this IDE. So very rarely they use it IDE. The only reason they use IDE is uh, I will give you, I am, I am almost giving away everything now, right? After I run this, I will give away everything and whatever I am sh going to show you right now, that will uh, make you an extremely, extremely intelligent tester or it will totally kill, totally kill your appetite for learning, uh, you know, anything beyond this. Now, why do I say that? Both of my, what I said, you know, both those statements, they contradict one another. I said that it will, either make me the king of, of selenium or it will totally, you know, kill my appetite for learning. Well, exactly that's what is going to happen because what happens now is the whole purpose of automation is to write script. Nobody does the recording. Very few people do recording. I, for one, have absolutely zero respect for somebody who comes and says that I know software testing because I can do the recording. I, I would say, you know, there is the door. Thank you so much for coming in. I uh, appreciate your efforts, uh, but thank you. I don't need you, right? Because I, automation, to me, automation means uh, having the ability to write the code, right? Record and run, uh, anybody can do it. I mean, literally anybody can do it. Uh, you know, uh, if I take somebody from McDonald's who is flipping the burgers and bring them here and say, please record, she will be or he will be more than happy to do that. Right? But I don't need them. I need somebody who can do the scripting. scripting. So we have to eventually get into scripting where what can we do? We have to do the following. I'm fast. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like uh, doing a fast forward here only to 
I think I gave you a glimpse in the previous class as well, but very quickly I'll just give you the glimpse and then we will go there and I will give you a shortcut of getting there. Shortcuts are, are not really that good, but hey, I am, I'm going to give it to you because you, you are paying me for this course, so I got to show you everything. So I will show you uh, the good and the bad and the ugly. Now, which route do you choose is rather up to you right there are shortcuts shortcuts are shortcuts sometimes shortcuts are good in life but then they are not necessarily the best things which you should be doing now coming back uh, we are no longer using android i am using this so i'm going to go in here um so um what what the end goal is um you know you have to go and climb the mountain right you have to go and climb the mountain right and then you will see the light so if you have to climb the mountain you could get on top of that mountain without putting any effort if you just you know fly there right and then just drop off the um, you know parachute and then you are right there on the top of the mountain but then you would not go through the experience of you know um, that divine light coming to you by you know, putting that effort of like climbing up the, uh, the the mountain and experiencing it, what goes now? Now that you know everything, while you are climbing up, you would you would be able to, you know, take care of that situation anytime because you have experienced it. You could take a shortcut, right? Um, so here, this is the this is the uh, goal. This is our goal. This is where we are going. Right? We should know as how to write functions. We should know as how to write overloaded functions. What are objects? What are classes? Uh, and uh, how do you instantiate an object out of a class? What is a constructor? What is an overloaded constructor? What is a function? What is an overloaded function? Right. So uh, now if you are going to use arrays, how do you create arrays in Java? What are single dimensional arrays? What are multi three dimensional arrays how do you create multi dimensional arrays how do you fetch data from it how would you use that data which you're fetching from a multi dimensional array into your test script how would you use frameworks like junit how would you use framework like testng what is the difference between a uh, JUnit framework and a test ng framework. Where does ant fit into this big picture? What is Maven? Uh, what is now? Um, I am like babbling for most of you. What is he doing? He's just babbling. He's just yeah. I mean, at this time, yes. But when you go for a job in Selenium, exactly all that is required. So you have a shortcut. The shortcut is you don't really have to learn how to write this code. You do not have to learn how to write this code. No need for all of this, whatever I'm doing here. Absolutely no need, no need for that. Why? Because here we could cheat here. We can record and we have all these instructions. Now here is the deal. Here is the cheating part which I'm showing you. Now if you write all this code you're putting all this effort by writing this code right so now you don't really have to do that why because you could go in here go into options go into options go into format and if you see you see you see here IDE can produce the code Selenium IDE, Selenium IDE can produce the code automatically. It will convert all of these instructions or commands which we have put in here. We have only five. In real life, you will have like 55. And it will take how many clicks? One, two. And what do you want? Do you want a web driver in C sharp? Or do you want a web driver in Java? How about an RC server in Java with JU in it? Or maybe in test engine? Anything you want. This is like a genie, right? It is going to say, master, you ask, I give, right? So you as a master, you would say, give me this. Give me what? Give me web driver code. And you click on that and it says, are you sure? You say, yes. And lo and behold, you have all this code. You have all this code. Right? You have all this code, you take the code and you put it wherever you are supposed to put it and boom, everything works. Right? Because did everything work uh, from your IDE? Yeah, everything worked. So now everything is right here. So now you would say that, 
wow, this is the thing I was waiting for. This is that genie anybody and everybody wants, right? Who was that character? Um, Alibaba or, uh, no, Aladdin. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, uh, <laughs> so he got the lamp, right? So here is your lamp. Here is your lamp. Just uh, rub it the right way, right? Don't rub it the wrong way. Rub it the right way. So you ask and then you get. So you say that, give me C sharp. Okay, here is C sharp code. Are you sure, genie asked? Yes. And here is C sharp code. And anybody who has done C sharp, you know that uh, this is what it is. So here is uh, all your uh, using, right? All your using system, system dot text. Uh, um, anybody C sharp experience, then you know what I'm talking about right here, right? All these namespaces are here, right? So you could add, uh, and then you could just run all this assert, whatever we said, assert right is there and driver go and navigate take me to the base URL which, which is the base URL somewhere over here the base URL would have been declared and here is the base URL go to screencast.com go and then do this do that so everything is here so you would say what is the need for me to pay now and then be in this class for another uh, seven eight sessions to learn all this right well um, quite honestly uh, there is not a reason <laughs> <laughs> no, you would be learning quite a bit. Anyway, so that's the trick which I gave you. Now, the question is, should you use it or should you not? Here is a tool. Here is a tool. Um, I, I have a boss who says that, um, you know, if you give a drill machine, a drill machine, a drill machine does what? I mean, it drills uh, without any effort. It drills the screws uh, in, in, into the wood, right? Now, if you give a drill machine, which is a tool, right, to a wrong guy, he would use it as a hammer, meaning that he has to, he has to put the nail in the wood. So rather than screwing that uh, through a uh, drill machine into the wood, he would, you know, hit it. So I, if I give you this code, Unless you know, you are smart enough to know where to take it, how to put it, what are the things which you have to do, well, you could, this would mean nothing to you. This code is like, ah, the code is there, but I don't know what, what, is, what is this, what is this. I have no uh, understanding of what is this, what is uh, here. I don't know what it is here. So you have to go through a step-by-step -step process of understanding, but to the wise this is uh, like if you have done any programming and all that, now you can take this and you can run with it, right? Okay, with that said, now you, you know why uh, IDE is important in your life because you would be coming back to IDE again and again. If you cannot properly write the script here, you come back to the IDE, you record it, and then you copy from it, and you come back and then you paste it in your tool and then it will run. So cheating is okay, right? As long as, you know, you don't um, uh, abuse it, right? Um, uh, you would say that now you're talking about a Swedish guy. That's why they have uh, drugs legal there. <laughs> what is the correlation between a drug and a selenium class? I have no clue. Um, anyway, so let's um, go back in here and uh, Oh, um, in the I mean, this is how they get they get you, in the conversation. Um, I mean, they they have, they have these words now. Uh, when you're talking to NSA, uh, says that uh, I mean, they have this uh, Snowden. He exposed what United States does, right? In terms of uh, uh, sniffing everybody, what you are doing in your bedroom or what whatever you're doing, any part of the world, uh, America knows now, right? FBI and the government, they knows about it now. So long time back, they used to have like certain words uh, uh, in the phone conversation. They would hear the conversation and they if they hear the word like uh, bomb or something, then they come, they knock on your door. But today there's nothing like that. I mean, they, they can, um, the... Chancellor of Germany, uh, you know, her phone was tapped. I mean, she's she's like the president of Germany, like the prime minister of Germany. Her phone was uh, tapped, and now uh, they're fighting that Obama already knew about it. And uh, Obama, as always, uh, he says, "No, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. What do I know?" I mean, so 
Uh, enough of politics. Let's come back and discuss about uh, selenium a little bit more. So, coming back, we have talked about uh, talked about uh, selenium IDE so far. Now, uh, we will be coming back to selenium selenium IDE. Right. Every now and then we will come back and I give you the reason why we will come back because of the uh, ability of it to produce the code. You will do the recording. It produces the code. You can take the code and then you could use the code um, in your uh, scripts. All right. So you would come back to it. So that is your uh, Selenium ID. More of it as there is a need, we'll come back and look at it. Now, while we were looking at Selenium ID, I talked to you about where to download. Uh, what other tools you have to have along with it, which is Firebug and Firepath. I talked to you about the limitations of uh, it and I talked to you about the uh, advantages, right, of it, right. Advan biggest advantage is it helps you in in copying the code. It produces the code and you could limitations. There, there's so much you could do. There's nothing like a logic or anything like that that uh, you could do in there, right? Uh, but as far as the code is concerned, if you look into the code that it produces, right? Uh, now, uh, in the code, uh, you have exceptional handling, error handling in terms of uh, try-catch block and all that. Uh, now, uh, for some of you, or maybe, I mean, I don't want to offend you if I say, uh, you know, most of you, uh, please excuse me if uh, you already know Java, if you know any programming language, then these are the things which uh, uh, are very critical for any programmer to, or when I say programmer, uh, automation tester, these are the things which you need to know, right? So if you really want to become a good Selenium tester, Right, you have to know the following because Selenium uses Selenium uses uh, a language called Java, at least for our purposes. Even though there are other languages, as you have seen, Perl, Python, and uh, you have C Sharp, .NET, and all. But we focus on Java. The reason we focus on Java is because uh, ninety percent of the companies, probably give and take few percent here and there, are using Java with Selenium. Right? Uh, are there jobs with Java and C Sharp? Absolutely. Are there jobs with Python and uh, um, Selenium? Of course there are. Are there jobs with uh, Perl or P? Of course. Right? You got to go with what is hot in the industry. What are the chances that, uh, uh, you know, you, white elephant, you don't want to get into uh, something which is uh, um, the company where you are working right now might be using Perl, might be using Python, but what are the chances that God forbid if this company closes tomorrow and if you are on a lookout for a job, if there's a job in Selenium, uh, you know, majority of the companies would not probably would looking for uh, Python and, uh, you know, Selenium. So uh, even though you have good experience with that, your chances would be slimmer compared to somebody else who has equal experience with Java and Selenium. They would get, uh, you know, on the nod uh, compared to you. So always go with uh, in like the middle of the road. Don't go extremes, uh, meaning that something which is not too hot, we should, we should look into and have a vision of where uh, the market is going uh, and where we should be going. So right now, market is for Java. Who knows, maybe in, in two years from now, Python and uh, Selenium might become very hot and then we will, uh, you know, cross that bridge when we get there, right? So right now, uh, we don't know about Python and uh, Selenium becoming hot. So we deal with something which is uh, hot right now, which is Java and Selenium. And that is the reason we are using Java and Selenium. So when we hear the word Java, everybody is like, oh, no, it's like really like somebody had, uh, you know, stepped on your toes, like, ouch meaning Java, oh my God, I am a tester, you want me to learn Java? Yes, it is easy because I'm not going to make you a programmer. I don't want you to become a programmer. Programmers, they know a lot of stuff. We are testers, right? Not to offend, not to bring you down in any way that you are a tester. You are an automated tester. You need to know enough of Java so that you could get your job done, right? If you want to start, if you really want 
to know more about it, then you have to change your field and get into development. So let's not go there. Let's learn enough of Java so that we can do good automation testing. So what is that enough of Java that we need to know? For that matter, any programming uh, language that we need to know from a tester's perspective is the following. We need to know about variables. We have to have a good idea about what are variables, how do you create them, how do you use them in your script, how do you populate them, how do you like from one function to the other function, how can you move variables, will the data go, are these are private variables, public variables, so anything and everything about variables is what you need to know, right? Second thing, we have to know about arrays, right? What are arrays? There is single dimensional arrays, multi-dimensional arrays, right? So what is, uh, why should we even bother using an array? right why what is an array why should we even use that so we got to be looking into an array right then we should be looking into there are two types of array there is a single dimensional array and then there are multi dimensional arrays in a multi dimensional array we have to go and then create them bring lot of data into this array and then use that data in your script so we have to know as how to create that so this is a single dimensional array this is a multi dimensional array so focus on arrays right variables probably like 5 minutes you will get everything about variables arrays probably like 15 minutes uh, or maybe i'm just exaggerating maybe 25 or let's say 30 minutes how about that half an hour is more than enough for you to learn about arrays that easy it is right then what do we need to know we need to know about functions right now we said java no i can't do it but what is there in java variables okay 5 10 minutes arrays half an hour maybe an hour functions let's talk about different types of functions functions that take parameters what are parameters how do you create functions with parameters there are single um, parameters multiple parameters and stuff like that so we will be dealing about functions functions can be overloaded uh, overloaded so what is overloading we'll talk about that and how do you overload a function now the reason for this is because I want you to look good in the interview when you go there they're gonna ask you like okay from your previous uh, project can you talk a little bit about what you have done in your previous project you would say that oh I have created a framework right I've created a framework in selenium with Java we have used lot of functions there we overloaded the functions we passed a lot of data coming from multi-dimensional arrays and then we, we so now you're starting to become you know and look intelligent right so this is just you know one part of it what else do we need to know in Java so other than functions of course you have to know the conditional logic in terms of if statements do I know how if works right if this is the case if this condition is true then do this else if this condition is true then do that else do this right okay if else if else good okay now how about loops okay we have to do for loop for i equals 0 and i less than the total number of rows and uh, i plus plus what do you want to do uh, have some logic in there so this is your for loop so now this is it about java so we were fearing java all along right we don't need to know anything you know too crazy about you know sealing a class inheritance polymorphism who am i I'm a tester. Come on. Come on. I don't need to know polymorphism. I don't need to know inheritance. No need of sealing a class. What the heck? Am I creating a class? No. Why should I worry about sealing a class? Right? Okay, if that's what you want, you want to look good, you want to talk good, and you want to impress people. How about in development? Let's go into this. Is not the area. For us to be testers, Selenium testers, enough of this. Testers are not programmers, not developers. So we need to know enough of it to get our job done and our job is to make sure the quality of the software that is being built by these developers, we certify that as being good or not. So how does it relate to sealing a class? By the way, what do you mean by sealing a class? Right? That's a topic for another day. So let us uh, come back and continue. Um, now, what is this? Uh, for functional testing, how does it really matter if it is uh, uh, Selenium, Python, Java, when it ultimately boils down to developing a script that which automates some manual task? Yeah, that script has to be written in some language. That script has to be written in some language. So the point here is, the question uh, here is, uh, if we are doing functional testing, 
how does it really matter if it is selenium or python or selenium or java you know when it ultimately boils down to developing a script that uh, automates some manual tasks so how does it matter if you're using python or so basically when you're creating a script when you're creating a script that script must be created in some language so you should know that language right so that's why it is important if you if you are creating your script in python so would you want to learn creating your script in python i would say heck no right um i have no bias uh, you know towards learning java or not learning java or learning python or what what i go with is look uh, we have a uh, limited time right if you if you s look at life uh, th this is not a philosophy class so i'm not going to you know talk too much about it but uh, uh, we have like uh, you know up to like 25 28 years uh, anyhow you are struggling you're doing your college you're doing your education this and that once you're like 26 27 you come out and then you start to do something you got to have a vision so what is your vision i have another 30 40 years and i want to do something in life so i mean if you start like jumping here there there with no vision so you could be going python you could be going you know java you could be going pearl but let's take one stick to it be good in it and then you know make some money keep our family happy and enjoy your life you know go out have vacations that's basically what you have to do so uh want to learn python sure <laughs> go ahead learn python anyways let's come back um so uh we just i gave you uh, some details about uh selenium id next in line please next in line who is the next guy the next guy is um uh, selenium, uh, selenium, selenium, uh, RC server. Now, the question is, uh, um, all over the internet, everywhere, they say RC server is deprecated. What do you mean by deprecated? Meaning it's not being used. Then why are you teaching this to us? Why? Well, uh, I'm not going to focus the whole course on RC server. Right. Let me give my point of view about why I'm teaching you RC server. And this is going to be like one session or the most like one and a half session. And then we are done with RC server. The reason I want to uh, talk about RC server is uh, now, believe it or not, I mean, you know, um, some some of you guys uh, probably uh, after you finish this course uh, would be, uh, I mean, what I'm going to say uh, is is you know you you take it the way you want to take it right but uh, um, some of you guys would definitely be saying that you have like four five six years of experience in selenium well uh, as far as the knowledge is concerned the transfer of knowledge is concerned I can promise you uh, that's what my goal my intention and my objective is as a part of this uh, sessions the remaining six and a half sessions which are left uh, um, that's what I intend to do right uh, I will make sure uh, that I will transfer my knowledge to you. Whether you like it or not, I will do my job. Right now, it's like a handshake. So you've got to, you know, grab my hand and then walk with me. And as we walk together, I'm going to, you know, transfer my knowledge to you. And you take it and do whatever you want with it. It's That's up to you. So uh, as far as RC server knowledge is concerned, the reason uh, I want to justify transferring that knowledge to you is because of the fact that, uh, some of you would claim that you have been working for three, four, five years already, even though you are not, but then maybe you would. So why would you say that? That's a topic for another day. So that's uh, debatable ethics and all that. I am not, um, you know, discussing that. But, you know, fact of life, uh, people do that. Uh, and um, so if you do that, that means that three years back, four years back, RC server was extremely hot. So if you come across somebody like me on the other side of the interview, I'm, you know, not that I, uh, you know, would like to give you a tough time, but then I'm going to go by the resume. And I look at the resume, and if you say that, okay, you have been working for four or five years, and if you have never put RC server in there, I would say that, you know, what were you using in the year uh, 2009, right? This is 2014. Now, 2009, for that matter, there was no web driver. So you have to be, if you're claiming four years of experience, that means you were using RC server. Now I'm going to ask you some questions on RC server, right? And if I don't teach you that, if you don't have a knowledge of that, that means that, you know, 
it's going to be a tough time for you to face in that interview. They're going to catch you just like that. So uh, we're going to keep it uh, to the basics, right? I'm not going to go too crazy with it, but give you enough of it so that you can very confidently answer those questions in the interview or if at all if you run into a situation where you come across the scripts which are already written in RC server and you're walking into a job where somebody had left and you have to maintain those scripts now you have you have no problems at all because you already have the knowledge of RC server something more to talk about in the interview some more comfort level it will give you having a knowledge of this and we're not gonna spend like the whole life on this maybe like a session or session and a half so let's get started with RC server what is RC server why should I use RC server the idea here is I am going to go and test some some what a web application in order for me to test web application there is some functionality on this web application it is like uh, let's say it is an e-trade application in e-trade or ameritrade or td um, ameritrade or scott trade or this trade or that trade what do they have basically the concept the idea of that is what you as a customer you open open an account with them why do you open an account with them? Not because you want to give away your money as charity, but you want to make more money. Because why would they help you make more money? Because there are they are brokers, they are electronic brokers who would help you do what? They help you trade. What are you trading? You are trading some, you know, equities, commodities, right? Uh, uh, exchange, um, you know, electronic exchange funds, and uh, you are doing mutual funds. You are doing, you know, things like that. So that's a financial application which you are going to test. In every financial application, you will be opening an account, right, for yourself. You will be funding that account funding account right funding account is taking money from one part and then putting it into this account so this could be your your bank uh, from bank it is going to take money and then put it into your e-trade I'm using e-trade but any trading company um, you are putting it in there that means that funding account is completed once the account is fun, um, funded that means you have money now what do you want to do next you want to trade with that money what is trading trading is like buying and selling what are you buying are you buying an automobile on e-trade no that's not that for that probably you would go to some other place here you're buying what stocks you're selling stocks now you cannot be selling stocks unless you buy them so let's go and test the buying of the stock so to buy the stock you will you must have okay this is the uh, sticker uh, symbol Microsoft how many of Microsoft 10,000 Microsoft Microsoft is trading at $35 today right so you want to buy maybe hundred thousand stocks of Microsoft what type of transaction it is it's a buy and are you buying it at market rate yes you're buying at the market rate and then you would click on a button go buy right and it takes about two to three seconds and then it comes back and says confirmation number one two three four five six bought 10,000 stocks of Microsoft at the price of $34.97, right? Okay, so that is some test which we have to do, right? Okay, so that, that, that is some, so that's what is the part of trading. Now, if you go to banking, right, what do you do in a bank? In a bank, what do you do? You open an account. After you open an account in a bank, do you trade Microsoft? No, no. basically you will, um, you know, deposit like uh, into CDs right you you fix deposit for like five years seven years or you do so every business has something different functionality and our job is to test that right okay in order to test that we need to have what a tool where we can write some code and this code will be written in some language the language is Java in our case Again, I don't want to come back to Python and all that, but Java is the language which we are going to type our code. The tool where you're going to be writing our code is going to be, the tool is going to be Eclipse, Eclipse, Eclipse. So now, Eclipse is the tool. We have to write the code in Java. This is, I am sitting here in New Jersey, 
and I am going to test this application, whatever application, doesn't matter, right? Uh, so I'm going to test, and God knows where that application is. Probably it's not like sitting on the same machine as I have, right? This could be like in Mumbai, this could be like in Singapore, or in Tokyo, Japan, or it can be in California, it can be in Dallas, it can be in London, it can be in uh, Frankfurt, Germany, who cares where it is, right? Doesn't matter. The idea here is I am writing my code here, Right? And I want to go over the internet and perform these actions on that server in, in Oklahoma or that server in, uh, uh, let's say, in Paris. Right? So how do I do that? Basically, my instructions are written in Java. My instructions are written in Java. So what happens is we have, according to the testing environment or the architecture or the framework of testing, my code is written in Java. But I will Selenium offers you a, a middle guy called called Selenium RC server. It is so we have to put an RC server in between. And what is this RC server going to do? It is going to take my instructions, which are written in Java, and then it will pass on these instructions to that web application. And then it will help it perform those, those things, those actions on that browser. So first thing first, I might be creating excellent code. I copy it, I steal it, I whatever, wherever I could get that code from. I will get and I put it in Excel. I, uh, um, Eclipse rather, Excel I said. I put it in Eclipse. So once I put it in Eclipse, right, and if I say run, that code is going to go nowhere. It is not going to run anywhere unless and until I make sure that I have this RC server installed and this is up and running. RC server should be up and running. Now, the question is, how do you get RC server? How do you install it? How do you make sure that it is up and running? Right? Why do you need that? I already told you. If you don't have it, you have all the code. You could be running and then it is not going anywhere. You have to have that middle component in there to perform those, those, those actions on your behalf on the browser. Right? So you need that. Now the question is, where do you get it from? How do you install it? And how do we make sure that we run the test and then it, did, it does work here? Right? That's the objective. That's the goal which we are going to achieve in the next 15 to 20 minutes. Um, can we test web services in Selenium? Okay, Selenium is a GUI tool. Selenium is a GUI testing tool, right? So we focus on uh, the front end part. Now, if you want to test mobile applications using Selenium, yes, you can do that. If you want to test web services using Selenium, you could do that. Now, the popularity is if you sit in a car, the function of a car is it should take you from point A to point B. I, if I want to drive in reverse from my home to work, nobody is going to stop me, but they would, everyone on the road is going to look at me as if something is wrong with me, right? So there is a right tool for everything you want to do. To test web services, Selenium is not necessarily the best tool. It Can it do it? Sure, it can do it, but you don't want to use it. All right. Okay, let's come back and talk about uh, getting RC server. Now, where do you get RC server from? Easy. You go bring up your browser and go to Google and say that, Google, please help me download. Download what Google asks. You say that download. Download what? Selenium RC server. Easy. Okay, so you would download Selenium RC server. It is going to take you to a familiar site. We were here last time and we did this. We we're very happy. At that time we said, as we progress in time, we're going to come and then do this. Now the time has come. We are doing this now, right? So what are we doing? We are downloading Selenium RC server. Is that a box? Is that is that like um, like an like an what is it that I can see that can I see can I touch it can I what is it what am I downloading it it sounds like an RC server is it is it like a computer is it like a box is it like it is some software it is some software it is a group or a bunch of files or basically uh, code that we are going to download. So the latest version as we speak uh, on this day of 28th of October is 237. 
So let me just click on that and download it. So if you see, it's a jar file, Selenium Server Standalone 2.37.0, and the size of it is about 33 megabytes, right? It's a jar file. So when I click on save, it is going to download. And within a few seconds, it is downloaded. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to open this and say that here it is. So I'm going to right click on it and say open in the containing folder. Here is my here is my Selenium. I'm going to cut from here, cut from here. And I will take it to a familiar place that I have created. And that is Selenium as a folder. In Selenium as a folder, if I double click on that, I have created so many folders here. Right, I have like ID for tests, and uh, I have uh, this. Uh, da, da, da. There is something called all jars. It is important that you create a folder called all jars so that you can save all your jars in here. So as we progress in time, we will be bringing in different things like and, maven, right? And right now, I have something which is I right click on that and I am going to paste it. As I paste it, you see that it came down over here and if you see this is selenium server standalone 237 today is 28th of october if we go back in time you will see that in the september it was 35 in june it was 33 version 2.33 in may it was 32 go further back right it and go back to uh 2011 it was 2.5.0 so as we progress in time right these are becoming you know, more and more and more and more, right? Um, you know, adding these versions are changing. So it is 237. Okay, what do we do with it? This is a jar file. What do we do with it? Okay, this is what we do it. Now that we have the jar file in here, what I have to do? I have to go back to this picture, right? Uh, could hardly make any sense out of that picture. So we got to make sure that the idea here is I the goal here is it is going to imagine that it sits here right it sits here not physically though but then just get an idea that my code which i am going to write very soon this is this code uh, would be uh, written in some language language we decided is java but all this code must be written somewhere can we write the code in notepad Sure, you can write in Notepad, but I don't want you to write it into Notepad. I want you to write it into a tool called Eclipse, right? And once you type the code, that code is going to go through this RC server to the application that you are going to test. So we'll come to what application we are going to test uh, very soon. Let us, we got this one, RC server. We already got it. Let's try and establish the relationship between Eclipse and RC server and see how we can type the code and make the code work in the application. For that, we have to go and get the Eclipse. I got this one. I have to go and get the Eclipse. Now, where I would go and get Eclipse? Again, our friend, right? What would we do without Google? We would all die, I would say, right? So we come here to Google and say, uh, Google, help me. Help me do what? Eclipse download. Download Eclipse, Eclipse download, right? Okay, it takes you to this site from where you could download Eclipse. You click on that. Okay, now here you have you have different versions of Eclipse. Now you could go and then you could download this standard. You could download this enterprise edition. You could download this for Java developers. You could download for anything you want to download, right? You could download. Now, which one are we going to download? It says Eclipse for testers. Should should we download this? Now, uh, I'll tell you uh, which one to download and why did I do that? Why did I make that decision, right? Okay, now, um, if you look into the size, this is 199. This is 247. Right now, and this is this is 285. The fattest, the fattest of all is uh, this 292 and all that. Right, but the the difference is not much in terms of the size. This is 199. This is 247. Now, chances are this will work. This will be more than enough for us. Eclipse for testers, but. I have made a decision that I would recommend 
this Eclipse IDE for Java Enterprise Edition developers. Now the reason I make this recommendation is because uh, today uh, we need it for this purpose which is you know writing our code and uh, doing whatever it is uh, for testing purpose but uh, very soon there is uh, a possibility that you might be using Eclipse for something else you might also be using for mobile testing you might you know go ahead and then start to write some code and uh, as uh, somebody asked me about testing web services so let us go and get this this is the right uh, tool for us so when I click on the enterprise edition it will take me to uh, here and then it says that okay now you can go and then you could download it now I just want to show you the fact that these are the things which are coming with it right coming with it so that you have an idea that we could do uh, Eclipse Git team, we could do Java Enterprise Edition, we could do Maven integration, we could do all this. But to download, what you do to download is right here, if you see, 32 versus 64. Now, here is the deal. Uh, if you don't know what your operating system is, whether it is 32 or 64, quickly find it out before you download. Because I don't want you to waste your time downloading it and then, ah, I did not work because I have a 32 bit and I downloaded 64 or vice versa. So, to find out what version you have, go to start. Right, and go to control panel and once you go to control panel you'll find uh, this is large icons uh, small icons right so um, because I want to project it and show it to you so I kept it a large and go to system when you go to system right here in the middle it is going to tell you everything about what you got right so here I have as you can see I have a 64 bit machine I have a 64 bit machine so if I have a 64-bit machine, and you all know that I am a fan of Dell, um, I mean, things did work out um, for the past, uh, um, how many years? Uh, I uh, think, uh, uh, I think about more than 12 years, 13 years, I have been using Dell machines all along, and Knockwood, knock wood thank god i mean they work for me they work for me i mean so i i am a big fan of dell um so that's what i have um no dell they don't pay me for saying these things um, um 64 bit is what i have so come here download the 64 bit um it says that okay we have mirror sites uh, there is a columbia university where i live it's very close to where i live uh, columbia in new york so uh, you could go and download it from there so you click on that and then it will download it 247 i am not going to do that because i already downloaded it so i'm not going to show you as how to download they ask for some money if you are feeling rich um, you could donate something to them um believe it or not i did once i'm not going to tell you how much um, you know and it was not like uh, like a dollar right it was not even like ten thousand or even one thousand dollars it was like okay because uh, I uh, think I have uh, made uh, some good amount of uh, money using this tool and uh, they deserve to have a little bit of it so I gave them very little but I did give them I and I want to put it on record that I did that okay come back uh, here uh, the only reason is not to make me look good but uh, to spread the good things that if you ever get something out of you know using some tool or out of somebody you know spread it out right spread it out I mean you know what do you do if you live for yourself you have to uh, now you would say that you're talking about uh, <laughs> anyways I'm not going there okay coming back to uh, here is that software that we have uh, downloaded Eclipse, uh, right? Uh, let me go out of here. I think I have downloaded Eclipse. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I have downloaded Eclipse here. So if you see Eclipse, uh, this uh, was downloaded and uh, when I double click on that, and I guess this here. So when I double click on that, this is what you will get, right? This is what you would get. And please uh, kindly pay attention to what I am going to show you now because this will help you um, before starting this session. Uh, Amuda, I guess, uh, 
Um, Amuda, you had that question you asked me, right? Um, so you wanted to find out uh, how to set up the environment and all that. So here is uh, what you have to do. Now, um, you cannot set up the environment unless you have Eclipse properly installed on your machine. Um, so you download that, uh, and then uh, once you download it, it will be in the zip form. So you just unzip it, and this is what you're going to get. And once you double-click on that, these are basically the things that you have. Now, uh, given the fact that you won't see SOAP UI, SOAP UI edits and all that, this is because I do different classes, SOAP UI classes and all that, so I have to integrate uh, from multiple tools and all that, but this is what you should see. Configurations, drop-ins, features, P2, plugins, readme. More importantly, you should see this Eclipse, right, Eclipse. Now, here is the deal, here is the deal. Um, if you have installed Microsoft Office, then you know that you click on setup and then you go through installing files, registering with the registry, yada, 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 right? Here, there is no such thing. There is no installation. There's no writing to the registries. There's no, nothing like that. Basically, what happens here is uh, you, when you, when you unzip it, right, when you extract from the zip file, you get the application. So that is it. That is the installation of it. There's no writing into the registry. So what you do is, where is it sitting right now? It is sitting in Selenium, in C drive, and Selenium download, Eclipse. So every time I have to start Eclipse, do you think i got to remember and come here? What I do is, I just right click on that, and I say that, okay, create me a shortcut. Create me a shortcut. So it created here it is, it creates a shortcut. This is the shortcut because there was already there. This is the shortcut. So what I do with the shortcut, I will drag this shortcut, drag it and drop it here. So I drag the shortcut and I could just right click on that and then oops, right click on that and then uh, uh, just rename it, rename it. And I will say that this Eclipse I will use for, let's say, uh, Selenium. This Eclipse I'm using for them because I have different Eclipse uh, for different purposes. Like for Android, I have uh, uh, for the uh, mobile apps uh, for testing. I have this and that. So this is for my Selenium, right? Okay. So once I have that, so I'm gonna show you right from the beginning. So the earlier version of Selenium that was open, I am going to close that. I'm going to close that. And um, so at this point, you should have Selenium already downloaded on your machine, correct? I that that part should be you know very clear to you now how about using selenium how do we use selenium double click on that and it is going to open and this doesn't matter if you have indigo you have some other version does not really matter okay what matters here is this is important right this will um, this is important what we are doing select a workspace now, what is your understanding of workspace? What is a workspace, right? Um, and I keep uh, repeating about this in every class where I have an opportunity to talk about workspaces that, uh, um, you know, for me, uh, my workspace is right now I'm sitting in my, uh, you know, study. I have my desk here. On my left, I have a, a printer. On my right, I have my iPad and my Samsung, this, uh, that, 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 my, you know, stuff related to my work so it is my workspace so what is this workspace what is select a workspace what is this this workspace is any work which you are going to do related to selenium testing you should be saving in a folder so go out and make a folder c drive and say make a folder in c drive call it whatever you want to call it so in my case let's say i will say make selenium right make a folder and here i will call it let's say selenium selenium testing workspace right so selenium testing workspace that's what i have selected and it was pointing to it was pointing to my earlier workspaces in c drive let me just from windows let me take you to c drive and show you what i have in there so if i go in here if i go to uh, workspaces here workspaces right if I double click on that now if you see these are like my multiple trainings that I have done 
right? Da, 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 all my trainings are so all my if I ever have to go back and look into what did I do with this project, Liberty Mutual project, and if I have to look into something, I will go here and open that workspace. Open that workspace. That workspace will point to what is living in that folder. Now, right now, I'm going to be pointing to this one because it's a brand new. So if I use this workspace, there is not going to be anything in this workspace. So it opens up pretty fast. And what opens up is Eclipse, right? Now, this is, this is like a virgin Eclipse. There is nothing in it, right? Brand new, nothing in it. So here is what it tells you. Okay, you can go look into the overview, some samples, some tutorials, this and that. I will say that thank you, and I will click on this welcome, and I'm out of here. Now, uh, let us spend a good five minutes understanding this, because if you understand what I am going to show you right now, you will not have, hopefully, you will not have the questions which I majority of the times I uh, get when I feel a little lazy and I don't explain these things immediately in the next uh, you know class I have a flurry of questions oh I tried to do this I could not do it I followed your video step by step I did but it did not work for me because I could not even you know open an, uh, a project so why because I have not shown certain things so I will show you a few things in detail here. First of all, you have these menu items on the top, menu items on the top, right? Now, uh, again, if you have used Word or if you have used Excel, basically what do you do? You go file, open file, do this, do that, same deal, file, file, and then new. New what? New what? New, new what? New JPA project. What is JPA project? What is this aspect? What is servlet? What is this? What is that? Right? So now what you see here, what you see here is based on what is called the perspective. Perspective. It's based on the perspective. What is a perspective? Now if you see here, if you see here, now by default, depending on uh, the version of of Eclipse I have downloaded. I have downloaded the Java Enterprise Edition. So it is showing me more from a developer's perspective. From a developer's point of view, it is showing me that, okay, you can open, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you see, you can create a new project. Uh, it's a JPA project or an enterprise application project or EJB project or, you know, you can create a servlet. I don't want to do all that. So I am not in the right perspective. So now the question is, how do you change the perspective? Well, what you do is, what you do is, you, you come here, you come here. See this plus? When you click on this plus, it will show you, ah, we have different perspectives here. Always, always, unless and uh, until I tell you to uh, select a different one, always select Java perspective. So I selected Java perspective. So it moved this, this to the side. It is there. I don't need it. I need Java perspective. With the Java perspective, now if you do a file and do a new, right, the very first thing it shows is Java project. It might not show you Android application project when you do it. It might not show you and all that because I have an Android SDK installed on my machine. So that's why it is showing you. So don't uh, complain and write me an email saying that, oh, my, there is something wrong with my Eclipse. It is not showing the Android application. No, it will not. It should not. Right? Because my machine, I use the same machine for doing my mobile testing, so I prepared it so that it can it can do the following. It can uh, start what is called the Android SDK manager, and then it can you know uh, connect me to uh, my mobile devices and da 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 da. Right? So that's why it is showing me all that. So in your case, it should not. It should not. So don't complain if it is not showing because that's a good thing because we don't want it to show. So. Anyways, so now now that we deal with the menu, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the other uh, stuff in here. So what do we have? Uh, we have the menu items, and as we need 
to use them I will start to explain at that time no point in like going file there is a new file there is open file no need for that when there is a need I will go and then I will discuss with you and many a times in this uh, course we will be coming back and then going into help uh, uh, while we have to update a certain uh, things uh, when we have to uh, as a matter of fact uh, I'm gonna go into help and then say install new software and when I say install new software, you would say that why is there a need for me to install new software? Because uh, you have to install so many other things like you have to install Ant, uh, you have to install Maven, you have to install the plugins for all that. So uh, I have uh, installed all of these things in here, right? So I will be showing you as how to do the test NG, I'll be showing you as how to do the rest of the stuff. So at that time, I will show you all that. Uh, so we will be coming back to this uh, help and we'll be coming back to... Uh, this install and check for updates and all that. Uh, likewise, we'll come back and then look into different different views. I'm going to go in here and look for an ant view. I'm going to go in here and look for in the other. I'm going to look for if you see here, there is something called uh, uh, where is that uh, uh, under uh, general. Uh, you have you have different uh, things in here sometimes what happens is this this uh, package I, I did not talk about the package explorer but if the package explorer goes away how do you bring package explorer if the task list go, goes away how do you bring so this is how you would go and then you would bring those things in here right so uh, as there is a need we will go here and then we'll talk about these things uh, as we progress in this course now for the next uh, uh, thing in here the next thing in here is uh, your your tool your toolbox right so toolbar rather so in the toolbar uh, the most frequent commands you can use uh, from the toolbar say for instance uh, if you have to quickly run the project you come in here if you want to run in a debug mode you could run in a debug mode you could do things like that so this is what it is all right okay now um, most importantly what do you want to do is why we are here the reason we are here is because we want to write uh, our automated scripts now here is the deal please the idea here is we have been, I showed you now how to download Eclipse and how to open Eclipse. The goal here is once I open Eclipse, I have to type some code, uh, some code in Java. Now the question is, is Java there on my machine? I know that RC server was not there. I showed you as how to get RC server. Eclipse was not there. I showed you how to get Eclipse. Is Java there on your machine? How to check if Java is there on your machine or not? So you bring up um, and type CMD, right? Start and in that uh, thing you type CMD. When you type CMD over here, start and in this, in this type CMD command. And when you do that, it will, in my case, it is showing you trainer. In your case, it will show you your name uh, or whatever is your uh, way you log into your machine. Okay, uh, what we have to do is to check if Java is there, type the command Java right hyphen v e r s i o n version right okay as you can see i have java version 1.7.0 underscore 07 and i have java runtime engine right runtime environment of that now say for instance if you don't have it if you don't have it if it gives you a bad command java bad command and all that so you have to download java again go to google and download java i'm not going to show you that if you have any uh, issues with that uh, uh, you know it's very simple you just go in here and uh, java is owned by oracle right now so download java will take you to the oracle site um, here and uh, you can download free java download when you download java it will uh, basically uh, ask you uh, you know what do you want to download i want to see all java downloads it brings you here and then it shows you which version do you want to download do you want to download 32 bit 64 bit and uh, uh, or if you have a mac you have so you just download from there once you download and install it it gets installed now the next thing is now we have to start eclipse and uh, see how we can do our basic testing okay now in eclipse this is how things will work in eclipse what you have to do is uh, the idea here is i have to the goal here is to create an automated right uh, test script in 
and we are doing in what in in uh, in uh, selenium right selenium using java so in order to create an automated test script in selenium java and this is being done in eclipse right so how do we do it this is how you do it you will open your eclipse right and you will create you will create a project you will create a project so when you create a project in eclipse there are few steps which you have to go through while creating a project right like name a project right you have to name and add add libraries to the project and we I'll I'll show you what these things are how do you name how do you add libraries and so a few things you have to once you create a project this project is an empty project project empty right there's nothing in there so next thing is this is step number one create a project and in there you have to go and you have to create a class you have to create a class and creating a class again goes through some steps like name a class and then uh, you know how you want to start that class uh, do you want to add a framework uh, into that class like a test and g framework or do you want to add a j unit framework i will explain you all that but those are the things and then finally third thing is the third and the final thing is uh, you know you write your create or uh, write or build uh, your code right your code so that's what you have to do. so if you have to the idea here is this is this is basically what is your automated test script but it just cannot happen you have to go through one two and three so let me quickly show you how to do that one two three so over here we go to five and we go new new what new what new java java project so remember i told you that you have to go through some steps so it's going to ask you the name of the project the name of the project is whatever you are testing so let's say uh, we are doing uh, you know some uh, financial uh, brokerage right uh, tests right and this is uh, uh, build one let's say so this is the project name now what version of java this will be automatically be picked up if it is not picking up that means that java is not installed on your machine right java is not installed on your machine so you have to install java on your machine once you install and reboot java this should it should pick it up right okay so once uh, this naming is done you don't hit finish please do not do finish right do next do next when you do next now the thing which is important here is is there are four tabs one two three four tabs right now probably all four are important for us at some time but right now as of now the most important as of now that we have to pay attention to is this libraries this libraries right so when there is a time uh, I will I will go and explain the other stuff like projects and order and export right now from source we are going into this library click on the library okay here here is the deal the project which we are working on it's a Java project now do you think Eclipse uh, has a dream of what is your intent what are you going to do with Eclipse because Eclipse can help you build applications create web services you can do anything with it right so it does not know that you want to test using selenium so for Eclipse selenium is something external something which it does not know so you have to prepare Eclipse and you have to say that, hey, Eclipse, I'm creating this new project, new Java project, but my goal is to test using Selenium. And Selenium is an external, Selenium is an external, external jar file. So help me 
add or bring that into this project. So you have to go and say click external jar path. When you do that, you have to go and navigate to the folder where you have saved that Selenium RC server jar file. Now the question is, where did you save it? We know we saved it in C drive. In Selenium, there is a folder called all jars. In the all jars, I downloaded 237. Right? So here is what I'm going to take it. 237 and say OK. Right? Say OK. So I have added, this is important, that I have added Selenium RC server jar files I've added to this project. Good. Good. I don't need anything else right now. So I will say finish. As you see me clicking on finish, in the package explorer, it shows you your project in a collapse mode. I'm going to expand that. As soon as I expand, I see source. I see JRE system library and I see a reference libraries. Now what are these things? Now this is a Java project. So Java project uses lot of its own system library jar files. If I expand, everything is in here. Right? But for compiling, it needs some jar files and to do certain. So it needs all these jar files. So we don't touch it. It is there. We just keep them in there. Another thing is the reference libraries will come in depending on what you added as the external library. So majority of you, in fact all of you are right if you expect to see inside it Selenium standalone 237 because that's what we added. right? So that's what we are referencing as a library. Good. So far so good. So in my project if I expand that I have this I have this jar files, right? The references library. And here is my source. Did I create anything in my source yet? No. What was the process? The process was open Eclipse, create a project. You go through ta -ta -ta steps in that. Next thing is create a class. How do you create a class? Easy. You highlight if you are not sitting on this source, if you are someplace else, go to the source. Click on the source. And you can either right click and say new, new what? New class. Don't create another new Java project. You want to create a class. So new class. <clears throat> this is one way of doing it. The other one is select that. You go to file, say file new, again a class, whatever suits you. So when you come up with the class, again if you go back in here, I said that while creating a class, you will da, 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 you'll answer some questions. So you come in here and you answer some questions. The questions which we are going to answer is it will ask you the package name. Right? Package name. Usually the package name is the name of the company you are working for, uh, their domain name in the reverse order. So this is com dot, let's say if you are testing for uh, Ameritrade, you would say that TD Ameritrade right and usually we do tdameritrade.com right so this is the reverse com.tdameritrade dot what functionality are we testing so we are testing let's say the functionality uh, of ameritrade as trading functionality so i would say trading that's the package name now the concept of package why do we need package and all that i'll i'll explain right now we don't have time so quickly i will finish it so we come here and the next thing is the name of this class. So the name of the class is usually whatever our testing is. So let's say our testing is for trading. So I will say uh, trading testing is the name of the class. Now notice uh, type name is discouraged by convention. Use usually starts with an uppercase. So the first one is you will go with the trading and better yet if you do it this way. Trading testing. Right? Okay, that's what. So, trading testing for what? What company? So, TD Ameri Trade. Right? Trading testing. So, that's that. Now, I will talk about this later on. So, I just hit finish. Right? What we create right now is a is a skeleton or 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 a place where we can go and write our code. Right? So, here is my class. And here I am going to write my code. And the code which I am going to write, now it is up to you. 
if you want to go in here, steal the code from here, paste it here, and run, that's fine. I'm not going to stop you from that. But that's like taking a shortcut in life. Shortcut Shortcuts can go up to a certain point. After that, you will regret like, oh, I should have done my, you know, the, the normal way. So this is the next six classes which are left. We are going to learn and learn a lot of coding, a lot of coding, so that you will be so happy with yourself that, you know, one decision of my life, right, after I got married is... <laughs> taking this course because this is a this is a very good decision that after so marriage was a good decision hopefully and taking this is is another equally good decision that you are taking right now all right so with that we will we will get out of here right and i will see you in the next class and uh, as you all expect it is going to be fun we will have we will have a lot of fun and we will learn a lot and then you will be very happy that uh, you know you took selenium course because selenium is very very hot there is still a lot of money to be made uh, and go places and we will do all that um will be able to access october class videos yeah you can you should be able to do that uh, lakshmi so what i'm going to do is uh, um i will make sure that i send uh, the videos to you folks right uh Manisha, yes, you will have the videos in the screencast videos. I will be, I'll be putting it in there. So give me, uh, you know, about like an hour and a half. That's what it takes for uh, this thing to process, and then I will upload it. Now, um, thank you, Nisha, for reminding me about the assignment today. The assignment today is um, number one: you have to prepare the environment so that we can do some testing. So, what is needed to prepare the environment? Number one. What you have to do, start off with, of course, we're going to be testing the application. To test the application, we have to write the code. Where do we write the code? In Eclipse. So go and get Eclipse, download Eclipse. Number two, do we, in Eclipse, while we create this code, I need a jar file for Selenium RC server. Do we have that? No. So go download that. So basically, prepare the whole environment so that you could come to a point that on your machine, you see exactly like what I'm seeing right now. If you come to this point, take a screenshot, send that screenshot to me as a part of day two assignment. That means that you have prepared your uh, machine, you have prepared your environment, and we are ready to rock and roll from the next class. We'll be doing some good testing. I see a hand raised, so Saroj, uh, do you want to talk to me? If you want to talk to me, uh, I will unmute you. If you want to talk to me, or um, I don't know if you just raised your hand by accident. So let me know if you want to talk to me. If I don't see a yes from you, then um, that means that you don't want to talk to me, uh, which is OK. Um, <laughs> um, uh, when we say server, is there a step involved to start the server? Uh, what are we doing it? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that will all be covered in the next class. We have to create a batch file, and then we have to start the RC server, and that's what we'll be doing. Um, in the next class. We will be uh, writing and testing um, kind of like an end-to-end -end solution with the RC server starting next class and we'll be finishing it off in the next class. So I'll be doing an end-to-end -end testing using RC server and then starting from fourth class we're going to be getting into WebDriver. Okie dokie. Uh, thank you again and I appreciate your presence and uh, I hope to see you back uh, on... Oh. Oh, oh, I got to tell you this. Uh, I, I apologize. I got to tell you this in advance. Um, our next class is supposed to be on uh, uh, 30th, uh, but unfortunately, I have a, a prior engagement on 30th, uh, um, so I cannot be doing your 30th class, so I apologize for that. So uh, we could um, either meet on Friday uh, and do our next class uh, or uh, we just skip the next class and then uh, we do our next class in uh, next Monday, right? Because uh, 30th, uh, I, I have a, a prior engagement, so I, I might not be able to do your class. Uh, um, so uh, you, you have to excuse me on 30th, right? So uh, if you want to do it next Monday, so uh, let's do it next Monday. Uh, if Friday is good for you, we can do it on Friday, so you are called... Uh, Okay, so let's uh, let's agree right now here. Uh, next uh, Monday is our next class. 
We will be meeting next Monday. So you have a week's time. This is what I would do if I were you. Um, you, you would have access to the videos, watch the videos and try to do some exercises. So when you come to my class, next class on Monday, make sure that you have already watched the first three videos, first three videos and uh, that is your, definitely that is your assignment, watch the first three videos from the previous match. So I will uh, see you uh, Monday, next Monday and enjoy your week and uh, the weekend too and uh, um, have fun. I'll see you back on Monday. Thank you.